Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be once again advancing upon our day night system and in this one what we're doing is advancing upon our previous video where we made it so enemies can only spawn at night. Now we're making it so they will also die when the morning comes as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you'll see that again we're just going to go through the night cycle until we get to night then the enemies will start to spawn in as you will see any second now when it reaches 10 o'clock they're going to spawn in and then when it gets back to 8 in the morning because that is daytime for me they're going to start dying so again this is what we're going to be setting up so it's now 8 they're going to start dying throughout the day you can obviously increase the speed of it or decrease I've just got it fairly quickly because my day night cycle is quite quick as well I want to make sure they do die in time so this is what I'm going to be setting up and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our level blueprint so it's going to be blueprints open level blueprint because what we want to do is we want to keep a reference to all the enemies which are currently spawned in the level. So you'll see that we have our spawn enemies code which we set up last time. What we're going to do is just move all of the code out after the spawn actor like this. And what we're going to do is again we want to add this into a list or an array of all the current enemies. So we're going to create a new variable naming this enemies. And then let me move this over a little bit. We're going to change this to be an actor object reference changing it from a single variable to an array. So the kind of three by three grid there. Compile and save. So now we have a list or an array of all the different enemies we currently have in the level. However, you'll see it's empty. So we want to add the enemies into this list when they are added into the level. So we're going to get enemies. Out of this, we're going to get an add node, connecting that into the spawn actor there. Then what we're going to do is out of the return value, that's going to go straight into the add connecting that into the delay or the rest of the code which you have. So now when an enemy is spawned in, it's going to be added onto that list of all the enemies we have in the level. So let's compile and save that. So now this is going to contain all the enemies, so that way we know what we want to damage when it turns into daytime. So let's scroll under here and find some empty space to do the code for damaging them. So we're going to right click, get a custom event, naming this damage enemies. And out of this, we're going to get a do once. So hold down O, left click to get a do once like this. So it does only do it once. So the health isn't going to go down immediately. It is going to be a nice slow progressive one. However, you can kill them all immediately if you wanted, but this way it looks a little bit better. Then we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into the completed. And the condition is going to be our can spawn. So as you saw up here with the spawn enemies, we've got the same thing. Can spawn is true. We're going to spawn them. This one is can spawn is false, we're going to get rid of them. Because if it's false, it's going to be daytime. So again, that's why you can name this nighttime or daytime, whatever. However, this makes more sense for me. Out of false, again, we want to access all of these enemies. So we're going to get our enemies array. Out of this is a for each loop. Because we want to access every single enemy we currently have in this array. So again, every enemy that is currently in the level. So we're going to be damaging all of them. What we also want to do is out of array element, we're going to get an is valid node with the question mark next to it there, just to make sure that we haven't already deleted or killed this enemy. So that's going to go into the loop body there. So again, if it's not valid, that means the enemy has been destroyed or killed already, meaning we then don't want to try and damage it because there's nothing there to actually damage and that will give us an error. So out of is not valid, what we want to do is the enemy currently doesn't exist anymore. So we're going to get the array and we're just going to remove it. So remove item like so, out of the is not valid, with the select asset being the array element of the for each loop. Because again, that enemy no longer exists, so it no longer needs to be in the array of the enemies we have in our level. And out of is valid, it means the enemy does exist, and so we do want to damage it. So out of array element of the for each loop again, we're going to apply damage, connecting that into the is valid there. I'm just going to move this down a little bit like so. Now the base damage you can set to whatever you want. I'm going to set it to 10. But you can maybe increase that or decrease it based upon whatever you want it to be. But for me, 10 is going to be fine. So again, we're going to be damaging the enemy or removing them from the list if they no longer exist. Out of completed of the for each loop, because again, that's in a loop, so it's going to be doing it for every single enemy we have. So once we've finished it, we want to restart this. So we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that into the completed of the for each loop. And this duration here is basically, it's going to wait this long before damaging them again. So again, I'm going to set this very, very quick. So for me, that's going to be 0.6, just because again, my day night cycle is very quick, just for the purpose of the tutorial. So I imagine you will want to make this a lot longer. Maybe every three seconds might work better for you. 
But again, just because I want this to be quick, I'm going to set it to 0.6 seconds. After this, we're going to hold down S, left click to get a sequence. Then zero is going to go all the way back into the reset of the do once at the very start of the code. So we can now actually redo this code. And I'm just going to double click this to get a rewrite node just to make it look neat and organized. And then one is going to go into a call function of damage enemies. So again, we're now going to redo all of this code to damage them once again. And again, because it's going into damage enemies, it's going to check this can spawn branch. So if the enemy hasn't died and it now becomes nighttime again, they're no longer going to take damage and they will live. But what we're doing is we're damaging them once. Once we've damaged every enemy in the level, we're going to damage them again and again and again until they are dead or until it's nighttime again. So we'll compile and save that. That is all the code we need to do here for the damage enemies. Nice and simple, we're just accessing every single enemy we have in the level and then we're going to be damaging them until they are dead. One thing I have noticed while looking at this though, I have made a mistake here. Can spawn branch isn't supposed to come out of true, it's supposed to come out of false. So if the enemies can't spawn in, i.e. it is daytime, we are going to damage them. So make sure that's out of false, not true. Compile and save that. Just one quick thing I've also noticed is we do need to make sure we connect true of this branch into the reset of the do once as well, just so that it will then work over multiple nights as well. Not too sure why it doesn't otherwise. However, if it's night, we're going to also reset this do once for the next day as well. Now we just need to call this. So that is going to be inside of our track time function, which we have already set up. So again, in the previous video, what we did was the spawn enemies. Now just underneath that, so off of here where it's daytime, so for me, 8 a.m., what I'm going to do is then call function damage enemies. So we have spawn enemies and damage enemies. Compile and save that. And that is all we need to do inside of the level blueprint. I'm going to close this. And the final thing we need to do now is just set up the AI with the enemy so it can be damaged. You might already have this set up, but just in case you don't, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to open up my enemies, open up enemy 1BP just to show you as an example. And you'll see what I have here is a random row code. And what I've done here is I've also set it so the enemy is going to have a random amount of health, just because again, I think that's going to look a bit better, mainly for the purpose of the tutorial, because I imagine in your game they will have different health from when you've attacked them, but you can do this as well. All I did was a random integer and range setting into the health. But for the actual damaging part, since we used apply damage in the level blueprint, what we want to use is event any damage, because the apply damage is going to call this function here. Then we're going to get the player's health, or the enemy's health, sorry, get a minus float out of that, with the bottom value being the damage. So the event any damage, we're going to do health minus damage. That is then going to set the health once again. So we're now decreasing the enemy's health. Just before we set the health, however, we do want to go into a clamp with a clamp of float, connect the return value into the set with the minimum is zero, maximum as 100. And this just means the value isn't going to go anywhere below zero or above 100, which is going to look a lot better and work a lot more efficiently. Then I also want to make sure that the enemy is dead. So out of the set health, we're going to get an equal equal float, connecting that into a branch with that obviously as the condition, and I am going to leave it at zero. So if the enemy's health is zero, they are going to be dead. So true, I'm just going to simply destroy actor, because if the enemy's dead, I just want to get rid of them and take them out of the level, so that will be a destroy actor. False doesn't need to go into anything. We'll compile and save that. So that is also now damaging the enemy and destroying them once they are dead. And again, make sure you do this for every single enemy you have. So you see, I've also got an enemy two here as well. So I'm going to close this and that should now be the code done and working perfectly for us. So let me hit play and test this out. So again, let's wait until we get to nighttime and they should start spawning in at again, 10 p.m. or 2200 hours for me. And then we'll see them spawning in as you can see here. And then once it gets to daytime, which again for me is 8 a.m., what we'll see is they should start dying. And again, because I've given them random health, they will start dying at random times, so it's 8, and you should see they are now despawning as they're dying, perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up, so again, the enemies are going to be spawning at night time, as you see here, which is what we set up in the previous video. And now we've advanced upon it, so when it becomes daytime, i.e. 8am for me, they're going to start dying, as you will also see here, working perfectly like so. So thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.